y'all, it's Nikki. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is going to be very chill. If you can't already tell, it is a lazy Sunday, you know, messy bun, sweatpants kind of situation. And I wasn't even going to film today, but I wanted to try something. And since it's makeup related, I figured I would go ahead and share it with y'all and see if it works or not. So basically, um, I have done what pretty much everyone has done in their lifetime and cried over. I have broken some makeup. Uh, today it's going to be a blush, and it is actually my favorite blush of all time. It is the Kaleido Cosmetics Skin Blush in the color Prima Donna. It's my favorite blush, hands down, and I dropped it a couple weeks ago and shed a few tears, but beyond that, I um, put it aside, that way I can try to fix it. And like most women, whenever you are searching for answers when it comes to home and beauty, you go to Pinterest. <laughs> So I went to Pinterest, found a pin, I've gathered all of my supplies, and we're going to see if it is a success or if this is another infamous Pinterest fail. So to repair broken makeup, um, if it's, you know, blush, highlighter, eyeshadow, anything in a palette kind of situation, um, I've got some clear plastic wrap, some rubbing alcohol, um, a couple of tissues, a knife, and of course our poor fallen comrade. I'm going to try to show y'all my blush so you can see just how much I destroyed it um, without tipping it over and spilling it everywhere. But, uh, like, it's it's not just a little crack. I mean, I, I fudged this up big time. I was so sad. Whenever it's not just a crack and it's like this broken up to where you have multiple pieces hanging out, um, Pinterest said that you do need to take, it's not a makeup spatula, but I'm not that fancy, so I've got just a really clean sterile knife um, and I'm going to basically go through and break this up as much as I can that way it's all a consistent um, like smaller kind of powder and not these big chunks because that's apparently gonna help the process so I am gonna lay this down on my table because I don't want to try to do this into my hand and make things even worse but I'm just going to gently kind of grind it up and make it one consistent powder which is surprisingly easy um, I've never like destroyed makeup or really played with makeup in this capacity so I'm not sure if this is normal but this is a very soft formula if that makes sense like it's breaking up so easily without difficulty which is probably why I broke it in the first place alrighty so I've ground this up into a pretty consistent small powder so now we're gonna grab the alcohol now you can probably just pour this straight into the pan if you're that confident in your um, motor skills, but I am not. So what I'm going to do is pour some of this into the cap, and then I'm going to grab that with a dropper. Um, you can use, you know, probably just any kind of eyedropper that you have. The only thing that I have that I'm comfortable using is my dropper for my Tarte Morocco oil. Um, if I get a little oil in this, I'm not going to care. If anything, it's probably going to help. So I'm just going to empty this as much as I can. I'm going to pick up some of that rubbing alcohol. And the directions say to gradually add alcohol a little bit at a time, that way you don't, you know, pour a ton of alcohol in it and then it's too much and it's going to be almost impossible for it to dry down properly. So just add a little bit at a time, it says. So I'm just going to do a few drops in here. And I'm just going to keep picking up more alcohol and keep dropping this in until I feel like it's a good enough consistency for me to start pressing it down and make a paste kind of. And you're just going to have to kind of eyeball how much alcohol you need to put in there because you know all pan sizes are different so I don't think there's a secret formula for exactly how much to put in there that I can confidently give you. <laughs> so just trust your gut. Okay it looks like this is starting to get where I want it to be. So now it says to take your finger and start pressing it in. Okay, so it's like, it's kind of squishy, but there's still a good bit of dry product. So I'm gonna keep adding alcohol. Now, as far as the rubbing alcohol reacting to your makeup, um, I'm told online, which, you know, take everything with a grain of salt and a lime and some tequila, um, it doesn't affect the formulation of it. It doesn't you know, change the color or anything like that, so we will see. Okay, there we go, that's kind of where we want it to be. So now I am just kind of patting it down to make sure that it's saturated and there's alcohol all the way down to the bottom. Okay, it says to let this sit for a total of 15 minutes, but halfway through around the seven minute mark, 
you want to take your makeup spatula and gently smooth over the product. So I'm gonna set the timer and come back in seven minutes and smooth out just a little bit more. Okay, so, ooh, turn off. Okay, it has been seven minutes now. So we're going to take our knife and try to smooth this, which I don't really know how I'm gonna do in such a small pan. Get a big knife and a little pan. Oh my gosh, my OCD is driving me crazy. I can't do this. Okay, I smoothed that out as much as I could with um, the oversized tools that I have. So now I'm going to let this sit for another seven minutes and then we're going to try and press this. Okay, alrighty, so it has been another seven minutes. So now I take my clear plastic wrap. Um, some of the uh, things I was reading on Pinterest, some of them said like a clear plastic wrap, some of them said a tissue, some, you know, some said paper towel to help press it down, but since I don't want like a tissue indention in it, and since I don't want, you know, tissue particles to get stuck in it, um, ooh, I'm going to use clear plastic wrap, and I'm just going to place this right on top here. And then I guess um, with my fingers press it down. It kept they kept saying to like get a you know a glass or something to help press it down. But I I don't have square shot glasses. Like I don't I don't have anything that's shaped like this. So I am going to use this red wrap and just use my fingers and hope it works out. I'm trying to lay this down as flat as possible and get all the wrinkles out and not doing a very good job. So we're just gonna go for it. So I'm just going to start, first I'm gonna press down kind of firmly to make sure there are no air bubbles left in it. And then I'm gonna go back through and try to like make it pretty and make sure there are no ridges or anything like that. Okay, I've smoothed this out as much as I can with my hand. Um, the saran wrap is causing a couple wrinkles, but you know what? I'm not really doing this to make it look pretty. I'm doing this to make it functional. So as long as it dries down in one solid piece and it's not going to, you know, brack or brack or break, break or crack easily or quickly, um, I'll be happy. Okay, so now we're just going to peel this off and I mean, that's that's not too bad. Now I'm just going to clean up the edges here where it got super, super messy with all of the loose pigment. It's not perfect by any means, but um, it's all in piece now and it's definitely smooth enough for use. So now I'm going to let this completely dry down and hop back on here and swatch it and try it out and see if it performs the same and looks the same. It doesn't say how long to let it dry, so I'm gonna give it like at least an hour or two, um, go, you know, fold laundry, do whatever, and come back and check on it. And whenever, you know, again, gut feeling, whenever I feel like it's dry enough for me to use, I'll hop back on and see if it was a um, success or a Pinterest fail. The next day. Oopsie. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had every intention of coming back on check-in last night. Um, after, while I was waiting for my blush to dry, I you know, went and did laundry, I meal prepped, I watched an episode of Outlander, and then I decided that I was tired. So I went to bed and didn't think twice about it. So it's actually probably a good thing because this has had well over 12 hours to dry. So I have no doubt that it is done and shouldn't move anywhere. Here is the finished product. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it's pretty darn flat. I only have a couple of wrinkles from the saran wrap, but otherwise, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't look completely crazy, and what's most important is that it's usable now. So it looks decent. Um, let's see how it feels. It, I mean, it is solid. It's not moving, so that's good. It's not breaking up easily, and it feels about as silky smooth as it did before, and um, I think it swatches about the same. This is a very, very, I don't want to say it's shiny blush, but it has a lot of luminosity to it. So it, I mean, the swatch looks about the same. Let's go ahead and grab my handy dandy Morphe E4 brush and give it a whirl and see if it applies. Um, of course, I'm not wearing foundation and powder and everything else, so it's not the exact same, but I have worn this on its own on my skin. So I think I'll know how it's supposed to perform. So let's just 
dab a little bit on here and I want oh, ignore the acne but I want to say it applies the same it's got that same pretty color it's got that luminosity um, it doesn't feel different on my skin like my skin is not reacting to the alcohol oh I want to see if it smells huh I was really really expecting to still smell um, a hint of the rubbing alcohol once I was completely done but I don't smell anything I'm surprised like even if it still smelled like alcohol I would have still used it because I'm just so happy to have this back but it doesn't even smell which I was I, I'm shocked y'all this was a Pinterest win my my blush is back oh my god I'm so excited oh I have missed you so much in conclusion what I have done has 100% worked without changing the formula, without changing the color, without changing the scent. I mean, it just, it just, it fixed it for me. And I'm so happy. Okay, awesome. Well, um, I actually have another thing. I have a highlighter in there that I broke a couple days ago. So I'm gonna use the same method and do it on that. Um, I probably will actually do a before and after for that on my Instagram because I forgot to take before and after pictures of my blush. If you wanna see a really up close picture of before and after of a broken product once it's repaired, um, go check out my Instagram. I should have that picture up by now. My handle on there is Nikki Kins as well. You can check out the description box if you have not already followed me on there or any of my other social media. But aside from that, I I think we're done here. This this works, and I'm excited. And I just oh, this is my favorite blush. I'm so happy I get to use it again. And I didn't have to go buy anything extra. Like I know they have like makeup repair mousses out there, which I'm pretty sure are fantastic. But all I had to do was go to my bathroom cabinet grab more of the alcohol and I got this done for no extra money. This turned out way better than I thought it did. Alright, I love y'all and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <gasps> I got some of the blush on my heating pad. No! And there goes my husband with the lawnmower. Today is a complete mess. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, for you ladies out there who suffer from pretty severe cramps like I do, um, go to Walmart and buy a plug-in heating pad to have around your house to just lay on your abdomen whenever you're kind of chilling. It does wonders. Oh my god, the lawnmower. <laughs> so while I'm sitting here, um, I'm going to tell you what I'm currently watching on TV. Um, this is not makeup related and I'm sorry, but I am always so curious to know what other people are currently watching. So right now, I am watching Outlander, which is not suitable for kids, so kiddos, you cannot watch that, but if you're an adult, that is a great series. It's basically a, um, like, Scottish time traveling version of Game of Thrones. I don't know. I, I am absolutely loving it. The hubby and I are also watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We are obsessed with that show. If you like um, The Office of Parks and Recs, which I have seen every single episode of both series, it's basically like The Office, but in a cop station. It's, it's so stinking hilarious. We love it so much. My husband and I are also trying to watch all of the Dragon Ball series, and I mean all of it. Um, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, Dragon, Dragon Ball Kai, Dragon Ball GT. Like, we're trying to watch the whole series. We're currently in Dragon Ball Z, and we're currently in the Boo slash Fusion Saga, which I am so excited whenever we are out of that because I am over it. I want something new. I need a new storyline. I need new characters. It gets to the point where a fight takes 10 episodes, and I'm just kind of over it. But I do really, really enjoy Dragon Ball, so we are going to continue watching that. And then on my queue, um, I am looking forward to the new season of Santa Clarita Diet coming out on Netflix. That is, oh, that is one of my favorite shows. I love Drew Barrymore. I love the writing. I love the humor. It is such a great series. Oh, and the husband and I are waiting for the next season of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. That, oh. Oh, that series is just a trip. It's not close to the original Sabrina series in the sense that it's not like, you know, lighthearted fun. It is very dark. It is like kind of demented. So if you're uncomfortable with that kind of stuff, you probably don't want to watch it, but it is just so deliciously like dark and twisted. Like I'm not a horror fan. I can't watch, you know, American Horror Story or pretty much any kind of horror movie in general. But Sabrina is just, it's the perfect amount of like scary but storyline, like it's not like a jump scare kind of thing. Gore doesn't bother me, it's just like the suspense and the jump scares that I can't really do. But Sabrina is more about the storyline and I just, I don't know, I love it. And if y'all have any other shows that you're, you know, 
looking to watch or want to watch or have watched or I should watch, let me know in the comment section. Watching TV shows and movies is one of my favorite pastimes, so if there's something I'm missing out on, let a hoe know in the comment section.